First of all, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my supervisor, Anna Ridgway. So I haven't seen you, Anna, for about some years. Um, Shane Woods for data input. And Kathleen O'Sullivan from the Department of Statistics who helped with the statistical analysis uh, in the research. So just a bit of background. Um, I teach large classes in UCC, typically around 200 in size. In particular, I teach two um, microeconomic classes. Uh, one uh, economics of enterprise and another business economics and as I said both of them are about 200 students in size so I in terms of inquiry I wondered you know within these big classes what are the factors that uh, influence success or failure why did some students do better than others um, what wh what um, were we doing or were there external or internal factors that influenced whether they had success and failure in uh, UCC. So this constitutes about 50% of my thesis. I, here I look at one of the classes, uh, Business Economics EC2201 module, and in there the, the sample consists of BCom students, BCom Chinese students, some visiting Europeans, and also um, some higher diploma students. So the, the students, um, largely homogenous in age, uh, they entered UCC predominantly through the Central Applications Office, and I got permission, permission was granted from the students for me to carry out this research. So I suppose the first thing we wanted to establish was, you know, what constituted academic success? And in conjunction with my supervisor, I decided to set up a focus group and we got 10 students volunteering and clearly for them academic success was subjective. It was different for different students. So for some, so the question we asked then is what factors, which of the following factors would um, constitute academic success to you? So for some, it might have been just a, to get a pass degree, for others it was a 1H and so on. So it was subjective to the individual. Then each participant um, completed a survey around halfway through the first uh, the academic year. So I, I can give you a brief look at the questionnaire, the, the questions that I asked, if I can open this up. So uh, the, these are some of the questions. Uh, first of all, um, each student into their student ID number. So I was able to link this, this, this student response at, at the end of the year to their examination result. How did you, how did you best enter the program? Um, if you were a CEO entrant, insert the points that you had uh, when entering your CEO points. Uh, and which of the following uh, areas did you achieve your highest leaving cert grade? You know, what, back, what was your background in sec secondary education? Um, does anybody know how to move this down? Um, all right. Just come down. Yeah. Just put it down this way. You just go down with the keyboard. Oh no, sorry. Ah. To get this, okay, yeah, right. just go down with the keyboard here. Oh yeah, yeah. sorry, yeah. That's all your grant, you want to go down further. Yeah, yeah so, um, Tick the approach, what category, you know, I was interested to see their involvement in the university, were they involved in sport, and what level of sporting achievement they had. If they studied economics at leaving cert level, what grade did they achieve? Uh, now, uh, also I considered, um, were they eligible for a higher education grant? And this was a, a proxy for socioeconomic status. Um, also enter the, the name of your school or college and by entering the name of school or college I could determine whether the students went to a public or a private school. And then the, of course, which of the following grades would you consider would represent academic success to you? Uh, wh where uh, a further emerging from the focus groups also we, we found that, that if the student resided wh where they resided during um, their peer time in university was also a significant factor. Did they reside at home or were they in rented accommodation? Um, 
during this term, how many hours a week do you spend at the following activities? How many hours do you spend in, at lectures, tutorials? How many hours do you spend in study time, in paid jobs? A lot of the students are, were in jobs. Um, and then how many hours do they spend in engaging in college activities? Then we looked at uh, what, did they, what did students consider the most vital elements influencing their success, and here attendance at lectures, tutorials, the self-discipline and effort, quality of teaching, interest in the subject, motivation, uh, persistent and active study. These are the factors uh, most vital in terms of success, in terms of failure. The, the opposites, pretty much, poor attendance at lectures, quality of teaching, lack of interest in the subject, inadequate goal setting, uh, and so on. So they were the, the main factors. So now let's get, get back to my presentation. So then uh, the data was linked to each student using their student ID number and during the term students were also asked to complete an online uh, multiple intelligences questionnaire. So we, we were I was interested, uh, why are, st are students studying business economics, are they representative of a particular dominant intelligence? Now, I have the questionnaire there at the background, but I think it'll take too long to open it up and close it down. The, you, you, there are many uh, multiple intelligence questionnaires online, and uh, we used, a fairly, in agreement with my supervisor, a fairly st standard one. So I went back into the literature then, and we looked at uh, factors. What did the literature say about achieving academic success? And there's ample evidence in the literature that multiple factors are likely to influence student success. For, for Garner, it was intelligence, teaching strategies, student motivation, self-discipline and effort, students' approach to studying, persistent and active study, students', of, stu students effective retention levels, and cultural expectations. So there was multi-factors, so it was multi-factorial. So what I did was we broke down those factors into what we refer to as things that happen before you enter the university, like pre-enrollment predictors, and there are things like your leaving cert points, uh, whether you had a, a higher education grant or not, or whether the student received secondary education in a public or private school. And then we coupled that with the post-enrollment predictors, like attendance at lectures, tutorials, hours worked per week, the use of Blackboard, which is our virtual learning environment here in UCC, the type of student accommodation, level of participation in sport, response to uh, progressive assessment, the perception and the style of lecturer, and the student's dominant intelligence. So in terms of the results, um, we see here that there was 44% um, of the students um, achieved their desired grade. In terms of the exam mark, the average mark was 59% for the class. Uh, in terms of the dominant intelligence, 35% of the class interpersonal was their dominant inter uh, intelligence, followed by logical, mathematical, and 20% musical. In terms of leaving their points, the average for the class was 467. 20% of the students had a higher education grant. 6% were, were had previous experience in private schools, and 30% had sat economics at leaving such level. In terms of attendance, there were 44 lectures during the year. I took attendance, an attendance list, and um, there, uh, the average attendance out of the 44 was 25 lectures. Some of the students attended none, uh, ranging to a max of 42. In terms of tutorials, we had 19 tutorials, and the average attendance was students attended at eight on average. Now, the numbers of hours employed, I know uh, total level education is supposed to be full-time, but uh, students worked, ranging from those who didn't work, up to some, some students working up to 30 hours a week. In student activities, on average, students are spending about two hours in student activities, 19 or 15 hours of personal study, and I was able to access the number of blackboard hits ranging from 0 to 86, the average being 14. 
and, and 36% responded to my progressive assessment. So we asked, you know, what are the, 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 the student perception of factors uh, influencing academic success? So the, the greatest one was self-discipline and effort. So student, 31% of the students felt that self-discipline and effort was the most significant factor influencing success, followed by attendance at lectures at 19. In terms of academic failure, however, they felt that the quality of teaching was the most important thing, followed by inadequate goal setting. So uh, here, this is interesting in, in, re in research by Weiner in 1986, he found pretty much the same thing that this type of result coincides with, with what Weiner found, who, who found that students tend to internalize success and externalize failure. That when students experience a less, lack of success, they tend to attribute it to a lack of effort or to an external cause, to the quality of teaching, rather than attribute to a personal cause or a lack of ability. So there's a, t a tendency of students to attribute success to their own efforts and failure to their lectures. And this is consistent with their efforts to maintain self-esteem. Okay, so the next thing then is the regression analysis. Again, it, we, are, we, what we, were, we used a, a log, logistic regression. It was a binary choice, whether you achieved your desire, desire grade or not. And that was regressed on the pre-enrollment and post-enrollment uh, factors. And here I'll just briefly give you the significant results. Um, I, I'm not reporting on the insignificant results here. So students with more than 490 points or 4.6 times uh, had a greater chance of achieving academic success than those with less than 490 points. And students who did a, um, a math-related subject, uh, who had their highest leaving cert grade in a math-related subject, was, had a greater, had a 1.5 times the odds of achieving academic success uh, than those who did language-related subjects. And the odds, so if you're living at home, rather than in rented accommodation, you are 3.8 times the odds of achieving academic success. And strangely, this may, may seem, seem strange, but um, I don't think so. The number of hours worked was positively associated with the odds of achieving a academic success. So students who work are more likely to work besides studying, seem to have been more likely to achieve academic success. And I find, in general, the students who are working are the busy students. And if you ask anybody to do something for you, you ask the busy person. And they're, they're much better, they're much better organised in, in terms of their time and so on. And the, 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 the last bit here, the odds of achieving academic success, attendance and lectures, thankfully, came out positive. That if you attended between 70 and 95 percent of lectures, you had eight, eight times the odds of achieving academic success relative to those who only attended between zero and 41 percent. So, in terms of our discussion. The results largely concur with those of Burton and Downing in 2005 that previous academic performance was a significant predictor of academic success. So students who did well at the even cert level <coughs> continued to do so because they probably had, they were more academically capable and they had good study and exam techniques. Students who achieved a high leaving cert grade in math um, uh, typically do well anyway in business economic modules. Uh, the, other, the other one, students who live at home, are, why, why is this? That students live at home, students live at home have strong parental support and more, maybe a more stable environment. They are under parental supervision. They might be encouraged to do extra study in the evenings and not stay out, stay out late. So the, the literature bears this out as well, pretty much that students living at home seem to um, achieve greater academic success. Schmelzer suggested that attending lectures also uh, improved the chances of academic success. This is consistent with our findings that academic success is more likely if a student attends the majority of their lectures. This, this makes sense as course material should be explained um, more thoroughly at lectures and students have the opportunity to ask questions and so on. So in terms of um, 
Gardner's idea on multiple intelligences, what did I find? That students with a particular dominant intelligence, so our, our hypothesis was that students with a particular dominant intelligence might be correlated to academic success in business economics. But we found that to be not statistically significant. And this pretty much concords with Gardner's theory that, individual, that as individuals we have multiple intelligence rather than a dominant one. So three types of intelligence dominated for the business students. Interpersonal skills, which many of surprise you about economics, that we economists that we have interpersonal skills. Uh, logical, mathematical, which is not surprising, and musical. And musical uh, intelligence seems to be related to, to maths, maths ability. In terms of the scholarship of teaching and learning, this provides an indication of, as to the students' preferred learning styles. So this helps us, this knowledge of of these um, intelligences would help us in terms of their preferred learning styles as well as their behaviour and working styles and their natural strengths. So Gardner pointed out that managing people and organising a unique mixture of intelligent types is a hugely challenging affair. So in conclusion, uh, how can this help us? Um, we see as having uh, forced this knowledge of the pre-enrollment and post-enrollment factors, it can provide a basis for helping lecturers reflect on their expectations of and about students so that they will be better informed about the ways they can facilitate student learning, enhance the influence of positive factors, and minimize the influence of negative factors on student success. Second, it can provide a source for helping students to reflect on their perceptions. So, Clearly, lecturer perceptions and student perceptions seem to be a little bit out of sync. Um, so um, it could reflect on the perceptions and expectations of university studies so that they can gain more control over their learning and therefore they can approach their studies in a way that can maximize their chances of success. Finally, identifying the factors that influence academic performance also enables us as teachers and lecturers to identify the at-risk students. It's at risk, that you are at risk to um, failure or not, not achieving, we won't call it failure, bad word, uh, not achieving your academic success. It is then possible to target interventions and provide appropriate support services for those students. Thank you very much.